Get that money, go ahead, get that money. Get that money. Young, get that money. Young, I'm getting money. Real, no kid. No kid. Buy all that cab and then your rats bought money. Can't even pay your rent. Money, money, cash. Shit, you know that's all I got. Money. Talking about. Bro, burn you for 3k, you high, and watch your mouth, gang. Don't take it somewhere else. Bro, I've been nice, because I respect you, but at the end, of, end of the day, I'm 20. I'm not your young boy. I let the big bro stuff go, because you're inspiring. Inspiration earn respect. It doesn't keep it. Talking about I'm you keep saying that. I don't do drugs. You're high. I came in this for racks on me, and a diamond chain. My left pocket all blue, look like the night crawl. Like that rubber band in the money. Yeah, this that ice music. Yeah, that ice I saw my son birth ticket for with all dollar signs. I've been nice. I've been nice. I've been nice. I'm not your young boy. Inspiration earns respect. It doesn't keep it. I let you slide with the little bro shit. I let you slide because you nice. All right, cool. All right, you, yeah, you nice, all right, yeah. You can slide with the little bro shit. I don't mind it, you nice. Bro, you owe me money right now. You not no big homie. Big homies look out for their young boys, not burn them. You a clown. So as you guys probably heard by now, Philly comedian, YouTuber, vlogger, Rod G's, has accused up-and-coming Philly rapper OT7 Kwani of scamming him. Scam is a very strong word in this context, but... Let's get into what happened and we'll make that judgment at the end. So Philly comedian and YouTuber Rod G's is accusing one of the biggest up and coming artists of the city of scamming him out of $3,500 as I just said. I want to go over the accusations being made by Rod, the response by Kwani. There are a lot of things being said and they're scattered all over the internet. So I gathered as much info as I could so you have it all here in one place. So Rod or Rod G's. His YouTube channel's called She Loves Me Ride, or She Loves Ride, excuse me. Ride rocketed the viral success with his first day in Philly sketches. Uh, first day in Philly, somebody walked up to me and said, young boy, take that tight ass hoodie off. And they told me that my forces was dick. I don't really know what that mean, but I'm gonna try to get a new hoodie. It's kind of cool down here. Uh, second day in Philly, he told me to grab a Doc's hat, and he made me grab a tech. So it looked pretty nice. But uh, we was at the mall, and he told some girl that she looks sturdy. And I was like, she don't look firm. And he was like, young boy, you fuck my money up. And I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know that I was, like, messing up his money. Uh, third day in Philly, some boys jumped me and my friends and took my hoodie. But he said it's cool because he about to strap up. But, yeah, we about to slide on some Johns today, so. Fourth day in Philly, man, I got my hoodie back. We cut that bitch ass nigga apart and I took his ski mask, tell him to come get it back. But yo, uh, I'm about to go, uh, you wanna grab a fresh cut? We about to go grab a fresh cut, man. I'ma see y'all nigga. Kwani, who needs no introduction. But for the unfamiliar, Kwani is an up and coming rapper from North Philly. He recently performed at Rolling Loud, California. He has sold out small venues throughout the Northeast of the United States. And he's pretty popular in Philly and the surrounding area. So now that we got that out the way, let's go over the claims made by Rod G's. So almost a week ago now, Rod G's released a video called 72 Hours with OT7 Kwani. And in this video, he meets up with Kwani in LA. They're both there for the Rolling Loud festival that's going on that weekend. And they wanted to link, shoot a vlog for Rod G's YouTube channel. And apparently they made an agreement beforehand about the money situation and how much things would cost. And so a few days after recording that vlog in LA, Rob released another video called OT7 Kwani scam me for 3.5K, he a bum. In the video, Rod starts out by complaining that Kwani kept copyright claiming his YouTube videos uh, and Rod was using a song by Kwani as his intro. So the first 15 seconds of each video was a Kwani song that Rod was using as his intro. And apparently he didn't get the proper permission to do that. So uh, Kwani's team copyright claimed the videos, which is pretty standard for these type of things. My point was I, I stopped using him as my intro because they start copywriting my vids. The intro was like 15 seconds. That was the first thing. This is slum. I'm about to just tell you everything he did. First 15 seconds, it used to just be the intro. Then just tried to take 
every video down with the intro in it, y'all. So I stopped using the intro. I stopped using the intro. And basically for half of my videos, I had to mute the first 10 seconds. Once an artist signs either a distribution deal or is not fully independent, it sometimes, a lot of the times, most of the times, is out of their hands in terms of the copyright claim unless they put in a special word to the label like, yo, don't copyright claim this channel. A lot of that stuff pretty much happens automatically with the record companies trying to protect or trying to, uh, yeah, I guess protect is the right word, uh, all of their copyrighted material, which is fair. It's the law. It's how things go. I, I deal with it on my YouTube channel. And... It's just something that if you're a YouTuber, you have to learn to deal with, no matter how fair you think it is or not. So that was the first thing. So looks like their relationship got off on rocky and shaky terms with the whole copyright thing. But eventually Rod reaches out to Kwani saying, yo, we should collab. And according to Rod's testimony in his video, that kind of never ended up happening. Um, Rod said it felt like to him Kwani was brushing him off wasn't really paying attention to what he had to say, blah, 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 blah. Y'all like Kwani. I'm talking about my supporters. Y'all like Kwani. I'm trying to bring y'all a Kwani video. The nigga will hit me. Yeah, let's do it, bro. Meet me right here. Meet me right here. Oh, then, then. Oh, damn, bro. Something, something happened, bro. Or we come here. I filmed the video with him. Ah, oh, we can't hear it. Drop it. It's always something with this nigga. But I never got mad at this nigga. So that's where their history starts out. So. Fast forward to last month, and Rolling Loud is happening in LA. Uh, Kwani was invited to perform, and Rod, incidentally, was invited by Chief Keef to accompany Chief Keef for the event. Uh, I don't know if he even ended up with Chief Keef. I don't know how that uh, happened uh, in terms of like Rod's uh, weekend when he got there, because I know he ended up doing a lot of stuff with Kwani, which we're going to get into in this video. I'm coming to LA to do the show with Chief Keef. I got my own hotel. I stay in the same hotel every time. I got my own studio. It was never for Kwani. Never. I'm coming down there for Rolling Loud. I didn't even know he was going to be down there. So to not make this video, you know, an hour long, let's get into the claims made by Rod G's. So as I already said, he stopped using Kwani as an intro because Kwani and team copyright claimed the song. After the copyright, Kwani DMs Rod on Instagram saying, Yo, I seen the intro you did. I appreciate you, little bro. And he 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 threw a little bro in there. Um, so after the negotiations are made by Rod and Kwani, it sounds like they come out with a deal of two thousand dollars for the vlog, or two point five k for the vlog for the two vlogs, and a thousand dollars for the snippet. And it seems it appears that they both had agreed to these terms. And here's where I got to throw on my, my big boy hat real, real quick, uh, my grown man hat. If you are doing any sort of business with anybody um, that you don't fully 100% trust, and even if you do trust them, it probably is a good idea to get these things in writing because terms can always be misinterpreted, uh, express consent to do something, may be misinterpreted by one party or the other, that way when you get things down in writing even though it seems like oh we both from philly we both from philly we both men we should be able to just do a handshake deal a handshake agreement it don't always work like that because one people don't honor their word and two there's always somebody out there to get you or to try to misinterpret what y'all agreed on or purposely act obtuse purposely act like they don't understand um now that's not to either one of these two in particular i'm just giving out examples of what can go wrong and why you need to get things right. But anyway, so before Rolling Loud, Rod hits up Kwani and says, yo, we're both going to be in LA for Rolling Loud. Let's link. Kwani says, cool. If you want link, that's fine. But if you want content for your YouTube channel, you're going to have to pay. And then Rod goes into their whole negotiation and how Kwani wanted, you know, 10K at first. And then he said he'll go down to 3.5K. And I think the number they they landed on was 3.5K. And the things they agreed on, according to Rod, was a vlog in LA, a studio session for the YouTube intro, and a vlog in Philly. Those are the three things. Kwani says, yo, bro, if you want to really lock into the video, if you want to do it, um, you got to pay. I'm like, 
Should I pay for this video? I'm not just playing for the video though. The, this amount of money, I'm gonna pay you. You gotta do the stream as well. You gotta do the stream. And since they took my intro away, we gotta do something in the stew. We gotta make a new intro. You feel me? So I'm like, you do that, I give you this amount of money. I'm gonna tell you how much he asked for. You feel me? No, look though. I said, all right, I'll pay you. But we just gonna do this. I said, let's get up while you in LA. I ain't never looking for no money for my pocket from you, bro. Just take care of the business expenses. That's it, little bro. Outfit, travel, that type shit. My security, my car, you feel me? Who am I? I said that, nigga. I said, I want to get a vid done. When we get home, let's get a stream. And I said, we got to do a new intro now because they like you in the intro. Let's do not even a song. Let's make a little snippet, something for something for the intro. So, yeah, for a video, a stream and an intro, okay, yeah. I'll pay you that for that. Not for a video, though. Kwani wanted Rod to pay for his clothing, his security, his, uh, I guess probably his weed too, I don't know. But yeah, Kwani, uh, he made a few requests and, and, and Rod agreed to those requests. So they get to LA, they start shooting. Rod gets the feeling that Kwani isn't going to give him the time that he wants. He didn't want to just follow him around. He wanted an actual, he paid 3.5K, so he wanted at least an hour or two of Kwani's undivided attention, a sit down interview, the studio session, as I just mentioned. So they get to LA and you can go watch the video, the studio, the vlog that they did in LA. Um, it's chaotic. It seems like Kwani's not really invested into giving Rod content. It's like Rod is following him around kind of just awkwardly in the background. And that's not what he paid for. So understandably, he's upset. But he says in his video he's willing to chalk it and wait till they get back to Philly to do a proper vlog with just the two of them, right? Without all the distractions of LA and and they was at a uh, clothing factory, L Star, and that's where they were at. So they film the vlog, they come back to Philly, and that's when all the bullshit starts. So now I'm like, all right, it's all good. I go back to the bitty. Soon as I land, the nigga call me. He said, yo, bro, I love you, bro. You my little bro, real shit. I want to let you know I love you. Soon as I touch down, we're going to do the stream. I, I I get there this day. His manager texts me. Yeah, he got to pick up money from this spot. Yo, I land on a Tuesday. It's Thursday. I text his manager. I said, yo, y'all was supposed to land on Tuesday and then come on Tuesday. I ain't text you Tuesday, Wednesday. You feel me? I gave you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to let me know what was going on with Tuesday. His manager say, you know what, bro? Actually, next Tuesday, we're going to knock it out. I say, all right, so say no more, bet. Next Tuesday come, I text his manager. What's up, broski? Nobody texts back. Pony tells Rod that he'll hit him when he lands. A couple days go by, a few weeks go by. Rod doesn't hear from him. Hits him up. Yo, what's up? Then all the bullshit starts. Two days later, I said, send me. 1500 back then broski i didn't pay that just for a video he texted me back an hour later i just ended stream at 6 a.m he said bro i'm sending you everything back don't drop nothing you want some weird shit bro it's 6 a.m it's ramadan i got a life you bugging bro it's been two f weeks while he got my money now it's ramadan bro i got a life this and the third you're not gaslighting me n do your stream or send me my fucking money back i got a family n I got days to relax. F you think you is, bro? You high? Stop texting me. I said, bro, you a weirdo because you ain't hit me. He said, you tripped out, bro. I'm done talking. I said, cool, bro. Make sure I get my money back. I was texting you for four days. He said, left you for four days? I said, yes, I hit you. He said, what the f*** is you talking about? I said, just let me know the new date. That's it. You tweaking for nothing. He said, bro, I just fucking told you it's Ramadan. I got a family to get to. I said, send my money back. He said, my duty is not your video as soon as I... Soon as I get back, stop texting me. I said, send my money back. He said, you're getting your money back. Stop texting me, bro. Simple. I said, all right, bro. They get into a back and forth about the way they're talking to each other. The way Rob was talking to Kwani. Kwani got mad because, you know, he was saying it's Ramadan. He's Muslim. You know, why are you calling me at 6 a.m.? And it just turns sour. Now, my personal opinion is that we got two big undeserved egos, right? These are two people who two years ago was broke as shit. A year ago, probably they had much money. But all of a sudden, they both get a couple of dollars and the egos are just off the chart. Collabing and linking with somebody is not difficult. Only two Philly n****s could fuck this up. I'm sorry. I hate to be critical, 
but we got to learn how to do business here in the city of Philadelphia. Be official. Stop trying to play off, oh, you my mans, and oh, you know, we both from Philly, so ain't nobody going to try to jerk each other. No diddy, you know what I mean? Pause. But ain't nobody going to try to fuck each other over. Ain't nobody going to try to do no shady shit. We both from Philly. It's all love. I'm a fan of your content. I'm a fan of your music. That's the tip. That's the vibe they was going off of. But no, nah, um, I'm just going to say this now. OT7 Kwani has songs out talking about how he's a scammer. How, you know, he likes cash money. That's all he knows. And for somebody who obviously doesn't have a job, there's only a few ways you can get that much cash money. And that's all you know. You either doing something illegal or you inherited a bunch of money. I don't know. Y'all make the y'all make the guess there. But point is, you gotta know the type of people you're dealing with. And for Rod, who seems like a a pretty chill, upstanding young man, he I don't feel like he we would have any reason to lie here because lying only is gonna damage him. Kwani's by far the bigger like uh star here, if you wanna put it that way. Kwani's by big by far the biggest star. So for Rod to lie, that actually would damage his relationships, damage his uh connections, and Kwani obviously will never work with him again. But the truth is the truth, and Rod wanted to put his truth out. And unfortunately, the response to Rod that Kwani has been given has been suboptimal, to say the least. Uh, it's been a bunch of showing off his car, showing off his money. I just bought a Maybach. Now, y'all need to start paying attention to my song. That's the type of stuff he says. So, at the end of the day, that's kind of a fucked up situation. But, you know, you live and you learn. Hopefully, for Rod, this will be a lesson to... When you're doing business with with Philly artists, uh, you definitely get shit in writing. You make the terms clear, concise. But yeah, man, that's the situation. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. This this situation is obviously fluid. It's moving. It's not finished. So pay attention. If there's any updates, of course, I'll be the first to let you know. Thank you for watching American Confidential. And until next time, be safe.